A woman may not qualify for a hormonal birth control if they do have a history of blood clotting disorders, uncontrolled hypertension, smoking, particularly if they're over the age of 35, or personal history of, or strong family history of breast cancer. Non-hormonal contraceptives have the least amount of side effects. Some patients really just say, I want to feel like myself and I, I don't want any interference from additives or any hormones. Therefore, sometimes women want to discuss non-hormonal options. A non-hormonal birth control would be that that does not have any hormones. One example would be the intrauterine device, specifically the copper IUD, and that works by creating cervical mucus thickening and has a spermicidal effect. Certainly condoms are an option, but uh, sometimes women uh, and men don't like that as an option when they're in a monogamous long-term relationship, but that, that certainly is an option that's non-hormonal. There's a female diaphragm. Another non-hormonal birth control option would be the birth control gel, and you would actually use this one hour prior to intercourse, and this also has a spermicidal effect. And then there are some non-hormonal um, permanent options, such as a tubal ligation or something called a bilateral salpingectomy. There are some side effects to non-hormonal birth control as far as if you use a barrier method, the failure rate is higher than the hormonal-containing birth controls. Between 10 and 20 women per 100 users per year can get pregnant on condoms or diaphragm. The biggest uh, reason why birth control fails is not actually because of the method, but actually because of patient compliance. This is why we try to make sure that patients are using the birth control as recommended. It's important for my patients to be open and honest because we can overcome barriers to their birth control options. I can find the best option for them and they'll be happy and be consistent with that birth control.